Hello and welcome to the Graveyard Media Podcast, episode 61 for the week of October 8, 2018. I'm your host, Sane Gray. With me is Dawson. Me, Dawson. And Thel. I said, a, I said a joke when you said the word 61, like, immediately before the podcast. And I feel like if I made it again, I'd just be like, I'd look like an asshole. Not to the Whoa. general public, but to you guys. And you guys are the people I care about. You still need to wait two more months, dude. Still need to wait two more months. But you know what? I'm a very patient man. Be careful. You might piss off our fans like Metallica. Shit, dude, you're right. What did they do? Death Magnetic doesn't suck. It doesn't suck. <laughs> no, uh, fuck. <laughs> what did they do? I, like, I do not remember, but I, I remember ex- I remember the incident. I, th- I feel like... I think it was, like, in the 90s, they said something like, our fans are idiots or something. <laughs> mm. They don't know what's good or something like that. And, uh... Oh, why would you say that? <clears throat> yeah, basically, they... they, they Death in- Magnetic and it sucks. They straight up insulted their fans and, um... Also, if 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 these people are their fans, then they are basically saying they used to be shit. <laughs> no, it it was in response to something specific that happened recently, that, or recent oh, okay. at that point that at they that said point. it. I, I I swear to God, it was because of the backlash from Death Magnetic. I because, like would not be surprised, but I don't I don't remember <laughs> for sure. Weird. So, yeah, Metallica. Metallica. That's Metallica. That's Metallica. Uh, fuck you, Piracy. Remember that? That was fun, too. Yeah, they still do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. It sure is. <clears throat> so, what are we? this is the Graveyard Media Podcast, where we talk about video games and movies and stuff. And the Metallica. First, and for Metallica. the first half of the show. We all look like Metallica roadies anyway. Yeah. For the first half of the show, we'll talk about the games and movies we've checked out this week. And then in the second half of the show, we'll talk about news. Video game and movie news. Ah, video game and movie nudes, my favorite. Movie nudes. Who wants yes. to start this week? Probably oh. me again. Uh, I've been mostly working on the Suspiria <clears throat> video. I haven't really done all of that much else. But uh, what I am going to talk about is a movie that I did actually watch it was one of the things i did sort of in pre- in preparation for the suspiria video uh so this is going to be kind of like a companion piece to it uh i watched deep red for the first time which was i'm going to be throwing out a lot of words that's like okay this is explained on the suspiria video so i'm not going to go into the detail for a lot of stuff uh okay. it was dario argento's uh like fourth giallo film and the film he made right before suspiria which it was really surprising. I've only seen, re- like, like completely fucking, uh, entirely honestly, I've only seen two of Dario Argento's films. I only saw Suspiria and Inferno. And fucking, I watched this. I wasn't exactly, I heard it was really good. A lot of people have considered it the single best Giallo film ever made. Um, but. In, so what okay. is it? Okay, so. Deep Red is the story about uh one of one of the movies in the trilogy that i made up a story about a guy who comes from america a english speaking artist who goes to a european country this in this point it's rome uh and he witnesses a murder and has to solve it with a news lady and it's fucking great it's really 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 good um i i I'd, I'd seen inferno after i saw suspiria because it was part of the three mothers trilogy and didn't think I, I sort of didn't feel the same way about it that I felt about Suspiria, but this one is definitely up there. I might like it as much as Suspiria. I might it, it might it might eventually fall to the wayside as I continue to rewatch Suspiria over and over again. Maybe don't this one, but like it's it is a very very good movie. Um, John, I was about to say John Carmack. I swear to God. I, I yeah yeah exactly and the worst part is uh i misspelled in the video that i still have to go back and fix i misspelled george romero's name john romero so this is uh, <laughs> truly the fucking uh the circle is complete i've oh, summoned doom i did it <laughs> what a it spelling there. In my house. just like in the doom video yeah just like in the doom video it came out um, in 1975 and has a rotten tomatoes of 96 there, yeah, there's some facts um, for you. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, like like I said, it's uh, been hailed as the best Giallo film ever, and it's much more of a Giallo film than Suspiria. It's very much a whodunit. Um, uh, explain. Fuck, okay. What do you mean by me. Giallo? Explain. Okay. Oh, that, that's what I was saying. Uh, I, I explained all of this in my like video for like twenty minutes. All right. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, but give us a quick rundown. What does Giallo entail? Uh, it's uh basically Italian murder mysteries. With okay. Lots of blood. That's all I wanted. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, uh, it, it very much well, the, the director of Halloween. I'll just fucking say that because I cannot remember his name. Michael Myers. It, you're close. Um, groovy baby. Don't want any any other? You did real groovy on that kill scene, baby. <laughs> oh yeah. You said Mike but... Myers masks. I got Mike Myers masks. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, you just have like constantly like immediately before the cut. If you watch, if you if you watch any of the behind the scenes on the the original Halloween movie, but right before the cut, every single time, uh, you know, uh, fucking Mike Myers kills someone who's named after the director. Every time he kills someone, <laughs> it immediately cuts before before the sound echoed in the background. Oh yeah, baby, groovy baby. <laughs> Thank they you. had to uh, physically restrain him. And bring someone else to direct. Uh, but yeah, the director of that, whose name I'd be able to remember on any other day except for today, for some reason, uh, was definitely, he's the same guy who directed the thing and uh, they live and stuff. A, he uh, said specifically that he took a lot of influence from Deep Red. And another thing you can see from uh, the influence from Deep Red is Friday the 13th, which just straight up stole Deep Red's twist. John Carpenter. John Carpenter, thank you. You were close with John Carmack. <laughs> Fucking goddamn it! Know. I know I was. That's like the first fifty percent of his name. And uh, maybe fourth. John... I'll give you a fourth. <laughs> and fucking John Romero is the last fifty percent of George A. Romero's name. <laughs> were these people made in fucking tubes or something? Like, what the fuck is going on? Is the Illuminati at work here? Did you see the, the Illuminati uh... as written by J.R.R. Tolkien, who constantly <clears throat> makes people's names sound the same as other people? Yes. Did you see the uh, poster for Halloween? Uh, yeah, I did. The new it one. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I I don't know what to think of the new Halloween. Uh, fucking if it's good, great. I I have I'm like I'm not super hyped for it or anything. I've uh, heard mostly good things. Yeah, uh, did I mean, you know yeah, the poster was? Did you know the poster was made by Todd McFarlane? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Really? Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, that makes sense, kind of. Yeah. Who would you want to draw a slasher films poster? <laughs> Speaking of Todd McFarlane. Oh boy. He Todd McFarlane also helped create the character of Venom. Oh I you know, I want to give a quick note about Todd McFarlane. Mm. I. Every single time that somebody says Todd McFarlane, there are two specific people that come to mind, and neither of them are Todd McFarlane. It is Seth McFarlane and Todd Howard. And so as soon as somebody says Todd McFarlane, I just imagine Todd Howard drawn in, like, a shitty Family Guy style. No. And Bad. It, <laughs> Don't. I can't, I can't. I can't help it. I, 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 you know, I just got infected by the symbiote. Peter, I wonder which guy. of the three of them is probably the most famous. Probably Seth. McFarlane. Probably Seth MacFarlane. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Todd MacFarlane is pretty famous. Yeah, but he created Spawn. He yeah, created I know. Comic but... He created. Comic... He invented the comic book. He invented the idea of the comic books as it existed in the nineties. Before he changed his name, he used to be called Todd Comic Books. Todd Comic Books in 1822 invented the comic books. You know, plus there's like McFarlane Toys, which does all of those. I mean, probably true, Seth yeah. McFarlane, but I think... Yeah. I think Todd, Todd McFarlane is probably more yeah. influential in his field, if nothing else, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Anyway, should we talk about Venom now? Or do you want to Go talk about it. another movie first, though? Uh, well, I'll talk about one thing that I found out uh, while we re researching Suspiria. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, the one thing I didn't talk about with Deep Red. Uh, it was Goblin's first 
The first movie that Goblin worked with Dario Argento on. Goblin is the prog rock man that worked with Dario Argento on, like, a lot of his movies. Uh, uh, fun, fun fact about this movie. After Dario Argento fired the guy who was going to write the music and have Goblin perform it, he was like, Goblin, you have one day and one night to write the mu music for this. And if you do good, I'll use it. If you do bad, I'm going to get someone else. And they wrote a fucking banger of a soundtrack. Nice. Like, Goblin is fucking great. Um... And on that note, the new Suspiria, which honestly, the more and more it comes out, the better and better it looks. It's got Thom fucking York writing the goddamn soundtrack. This Radiohead uh, guy. Is the new Sus Suspiria, is it a uh, remake or a sequel or a reboot? Uh, or... We don't fucking know what it is yet. Oh. That's okay. the thing. Uh, it, it could be either. What it looks like is it's going to be a completely crazy fucking reimagining. And you say yeah. that, but one of the reasons you had is because you saw the, uh, you sort of thought the original Suspiria, you kind of didn't get a lot out of it. Um, uh, my issue with it was mostly the story of it, I thought was okay. kind of bland. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. which, you know, obviously Suspiria, uh, Suspiria is influential for other reasons. So yeah. if they remade it, oh. but touched up the story that would make me happy i, I don't know okay um what what is basically it looks like uh the dude is trying to do is the biggest complaint is that i would rather watch uh suspiria than this two hour boring art film well for the critics who have come out of the new suspiria right so yeah i'm super excited he's taking it in a completely different direction and huh. that's neat yeah well i i mean i'll wait and see okay but yeah i'll probably yeah. end up seeing it eventually Knowing you. Yeah. Knowing you, yeah. <laughs> fucking take a... I have, like, a bunch of... In my mouth's forky, I have, like, a bunch of fucking grime in there. I need to get a toothpick for it. Anyway, now we can get to Venom. Sorry about that. That's I okay. I to talk about Goblin. Venom. Speaking of gunk. <laughs> gunk. So, <clears throat> Sony continues to be, like, an off-brand Marvel. <laughs> yeah. Um... It isn't Fox, which Fox is now on brand Marvel. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like I feel like Sony's still done a better job because they well, still have cool. sort of they're sort of getting there. <laughs> but Marvel, I, I would say the Fo Fox probably released the best superhero movie in like twenty years. Logan. Oh well, yeah, Logan. I oh yeah, but, but I feel like Logan was kind of a anomaly and i think deadpool kind of was an, an anomaly too but yeah, like and deadpool if you look at a majority of their movies they're really kind of trash <laughs> oh yeah uh it, yeah. barring first class basically all and of the, the x after it uh days of future pants no i'm saying days other than pants. first class i would say most of them are pretty bad <laughs> or meh days, of future, I, days of future past was okay i don't i didn't like it that much personally but really yeah um, but I don't know, maybe that's just me. I think First Class was probably the best out of those X-Men films, other than Logan, but I think what made Logan so good was it was very much about... It was like a character piece on Logan, rather than yeah, being right. uh, Wolverine slashes stuff up for a movie, like the origin movies that... Right. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I kind of forget about logan because i almost don't think of that as a superhero movie yeah Fair enough. Um, i sort of think about it as a, uh, think about it as a superhero movie because i wish more superhero movies would be like it yeah well i yeah i don't but know it's, it's it's less it has what, a, I think it's a what different flavor saying is it's, it's less about yeah. logan being a superhero and more about logan as a character he just happens to have been a superhero in comic books in the past, but he certainly isn't in this movie. Right. Yeah. And so, so it's not really a superhero movie. It's a movie about a comic book character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, but the, I don't know. The weird thing about Sony movies, Sony in particular, is they get a lot of flavor, right? But they get, <laughs> it's like they fall down in, in places like writing, especially. So the villain of this movie was probably one of the worst villains ever. <laughs> wow. Oh. Um, was he an vill established villain or did they make him up? I think they made him up, but I'm not oh. entirely sure. And they really fucked with the mythos of, of Venom quite a bit. Uh, for one thing, 
and I didn't know this going in, Venom takes place in San Francisco. Really? Why? Um, to keep Spider-Man <laughs> out of the movie? That's I guess. That's the Sony film? I guess, but you could have had him in New York without... Like, I don't... I don't see how it would have made a difference to have it in well, New York or San Francisco, really. I, I don't know, yeah. like... Venom is pretty intrinsically tied to Spider-Man, to Peter Parker specifically, so, like, to keep him entirely... Well, if you're not gonna have really him in it, you, you can make that decision without moving mm. to San Francisco. Like, right. it can still be in New York, it's just he, he doesn't cross paths with, with Spider-Man. New York right. is a big-ass place! <laughs> yes, maybe Spider-Man's doing something else, I don't know. Who uh, knows, maybe the Sony executives were like, ah, oh, fuck, we lost all that money on Blade Runner, we gotta, we gotta shoot it next to home, we can't afford a... I can't Actually, afford to shoot in New York. Oh, Blade Runner. <laughs> yeah. For a second, I I don't know why, but I thought Blade for a second, <laughs> and I was Lost like, lost all that money on Blade twenty two. And I was gonna say, ago. I was gonna say, actually, Blade was very commercially successful. <laughs> oh yeah, Blade was fucking busted out the box. Like, um, yeah. But yeah, anyway, like <laughs> that's funny. Like that's always like people forget that Blade was a Marvel superhero character. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, and he like, uh, it, I don't know. Even before X Men, or maybe it was around the same time, like he was really popular in his own right too. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so the the villain is like really bad because he's uh very two dimensional, and they take every opportunity they can to really push in the like push your nose in the fact that this character is extra evil, guys. Oh. Um. So he's like kind of a like an evil. What? Is it Big Wheel? No. It's like kind of an evil version of Elon Musk is is who he's supposed to be. Um, oh yeah, like in DuckTales. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zuckerberg. Yeah, that's No, because okay. because the character from DuckTales has a little bit of uh a character? motivation that isn't just I'm evil. Um, oh. Yeah. So this guy like he he's sort of an Elon Musk esque guy and he's like Jeff Bezos. I don't know. I'm I'm not not gonna start comparing him to every tech millionaire, but um, a billionaire. The reason why I say uh, um, Elon Musk in particular is because his company is mainly like, or at least one of his companies is about rockets. Okay. Um. Hence how Venom got to the planet. It's because they. Rockets. Yeah, rockets. They collected samples of an alien and from another planet. Okay. Um, which is uh, Venom's backstory in the comics, except they twist that kind of a lot, too. But I see. Uh, that sort of doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. It's and like, whatever. There's kind of, like, a second... They can do something second... different with the origin, like... Yeah, yeah I'm not too upset to about that. It's just, I feel like their decisions were very odd and right. made kind of not a lot of sense and the, the, the villain decisions didn't add anything to the story right mm. it just yeah. sort of like it's just we're I different think... yeah it was just because. different because um so for okay so the villain was super evil and like uh he's like oh we have a pharmaceutical <laughs> company where we're doing te tests on subjects but like 90 percent of them die but i don't care because the earth is overpopulated anyway it's like shit like that it's really dumb jesus <laughs> uh, uh oh, thanks white fruit um Black. so there's a second yeah, there's like a villain symbiote in the movie too it's um, not carnage carnage yeah, who is not carnage uh mm -hmm. hit, the the symbiote's name is riot which i maybe may exist but i have never heard of it um yeah and, there's like a fucktillion symbiotes anyway so like so the you know the spaceship crash lands in malaysia uh <clears throat> with <laughs> they actually um yeah apparently riot is a symbiote from before okay well they changed yeah. the backstory anyway but jonah jonah jameson's son was actually still the astronaut which was kind of cool so they kind of um I don't know, they have that <laughs> reference in there? Hold on, I gotta yeah. stop you here for a second. You know who Riot's first host was? Who? Deadpool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That might explain some things. No, but... 
so you know the so in this movie the the plane crashes in malaysia and this is another decision that kind of makes no sense uh in the comics or at least versions of it uh well because it depends because like the original symbiotes in the original like 616 comics uh Uh spider-man actually finds the symbiote on like battle world or something so it's like in, in, during Secret Wars, I, I believe. Um, okay. But in, in other in, uh, interpretations of it, like a shuttle crash lands in New York or whatever. Um, mm. It, But like this time it was Malaysia and it feels like the only reason for that decision was so that Riot has to walk from the crash landing all the way to San Francisco. <laughs> Hold on a second. I need yeah. to spend some time getting there so that Venom can have his origin story. I'll be yeah, there at okay, the end so of the fight. Know, appar- uh, uh, from what you told me based on Riot's little wiki page, yeah. um, apparently um, Riot was created after they captured Venom in San Francisco in the comic books. So, like, that's probably why they said it in San Francisco. He was in San Francisco, and that's where Riot and all of the other little no, because no, of cause Venom came out. None of them are offsprings of Venom. Oh, okay. Well, in this movie, that's, that's still weird. But I get so, but San Fr- he was in San Francisco at one point in the comics too. So at least yeah, I mean he was, but like something. <laughs> it's it's just I, I don't know. He he was in San Francisco at a time. There are a lot of Marvel characters who were in San Francisco, but like that's true. Um, Hi, I'm Captain America, and I'm in San Francisco now because that's an American city, and that's what I do basically. Actually, Captain America, who is he actually Falcon. Never- but not not Steve Rogers, but the Falcon Captain America actually oh, yeah. was based out of San Francisco for a long time. I thought I you were going to say Captain America never went to San Francisco <laughs> once in his life. I'm never not ever. convinced he has. <laughs> anyway. I will go to every city on this great nation except San Francisco. Get fucked, San Fran, you bastard. Yeah, I don't need to go to San Francisco. Falcon's there. He's got it covered. <laughs> anyway, one time I was hanging out in New York, and then this dude wearing a San Francisco hat came up to me. He's like, "Hey, Captain America, fuck you! I got a Boston accent because I grew up there, but I moved to San Francisco, so now I really like that place. Suck my dick!" And so I'm never going back there again. Maybe it was just from Boston. I don't know. But point is, fuck you, San Francisco. So this movie could have been a lot better. Uh, okay. Because there are a lot of places where it's interesting, but a lot of places where it falls down. I'm not going right. to say it's a good movie. Okay. It's not It's not a bad movie. It's a pretty okay movie. Um, right. That being said, I did enjoy it quite a bit. Okay. So it's not like... But, you know, I'm biased. I, I'm clear... I'm Right now, I'm wearing a Spider-Man like shirt. like Spider-Man everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, so, it like, the funny thing... The interesting thing about this movie was... It kind of was more like a horror movie for the first third of the movie. <laughs> hmm, yeah. um, because it's about Eddie Brock being like an investigative reporter. And that was like what most of the movie was about, actually. Um, huh. He breaks into this lab, accidentally catches Venom like a bad yeah. STD. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. And then like for a good ch- for a good chunk of the movie he's like constantly throwing up and sick and like his because uh, in this version of venom feeds off the host uh-huh. like the host's yeah. organs right. so the Ooh, that sounds bad yeah so i guess like in this this version of venom has to eat living things in order to feed itself stay alive yeah, yeah. um and it, like so that doesn't sound like a symbiote at all that sounds like a parasite yeah Actually, that's yes. Not, that's not what a symbiote is. A symbiote would keep its host. Well, but here's the thing. If it eats a living thing, uh-huh. like a bad guy, like he eats the head of a bad guy, mm-hmm. um, then he can heal the host. So, like, even though he's doing damage to the organs in the short term, if he just <laughs> goes out and eats something, he can heal the host's organs. I see. So it's like no harm, no foul, I guess. <laughs> if as you long as he to... continues to eat, right? Yeah, it's like being a vampire. <laughs> yeah, kind of, sort of. Uh, so he like, and they definitely have a symbiotic relationship because the dude at one point 
The dude fucks up his legs. He breaks both of his legs. And then oh. Venom just heals him. Oh, okay. Uh, which is kind of cool. But yeah. I, so it's it's weird in that it's sort of a horror movie for a good chunk of the movie because it's like about Eddie Brock being like, what the fuck is happening to me? Um, and then at a certain point it flips and it is like, okay, now we're suddenly watching a horror movie where we're watching the protagonist, the monster killing people. <laughs> good. Um, so I don't know. Like I said, this movie had a lot more potential than it kind of it sort of squandered its potential. Um, yeah, it didn't use it. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and instead it was kind of about Eddie Brock getting back at this evil Elon Musk, or e- evil Elon Musk character. Evil, um, evil Musk. Evil Musk. Uh, right. And, like, the kind of the backdrop of the story is Riot is trying to get back to a rocket so that he can go back into space and then have an invasion. I guess. Oh. Because this version of symbiotes are evil space invaders. And in the comics, you probably don't know this, but Venom is a, from a race of uh, creatures called Chintari, who are actually like space cops. Oh! <laughs> so, is that right? Yeah. And the only reason Venom was ever evil, technically, is because... Um, so he, he was thrown off like... by Spider-Man. Eddie Brock was so pissed off at Spider-Man, and Venom was pissed off at Spider-Man for being rejected, that the two met and were, were filled with so much hate that they became evil. That That's, that's why it. Venom is evil, but he's so, supposed to be a space cop. So, so like, the, the symbiotes are actually, like, Green Lanterns. Kind of. But that, that's... that's, like, you know, that was a retcon. Right. Because okay. they, for a long time, they didn't really explain where Venom came from. Right, he was yeah. just a... So eventually they, like, backfilled and said, this is villains, or uh, this is where his race's origin is from, or whatever, but... Okay. Um, but, like, a lot of, if you look at all of the symbiotes, the main reason all of them are as... are, like, evil, all uh-huh. of the ones that are evil, it's mostly because they bonded with an evil host. Right. Even Eddie Brock, like, started off as kind of a villain, but definitely softened into an anti-hero, and a, by now yeah. he's basically a, a straight hero. Um, right. But kind of in the Punisher kind of area where he'll kill people right, sometimes. Right. Um, Carnage was, like, the reason why Carnage is fucking nuts is because he bonded with a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know... Um, so they definitely messed with the story quite a bit, but like, yeah. it's I guess you know from an out if you really don't know anything about the comics or whatever from an outsider perspective, it's all fine. It all right. works, right? right. Uh, the only weird it's thing is like movie. Venom went throughout the whole movie, never mentioned Spider Man for obvious okay. reasons, yeah. uh, and so he ended the movie without even having a spider on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Venom. See? This iconic character's design is missing his giant logo. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, um, and I'm going to spoil I... this because I don't think it really matters. But uh, the first after credit scene was mm-hmm. Eddie Brock going <sighs> to um, Rikers Island and interviewing um, the guy who's Carnage. Okay. I oh. forget his name. It, it's like Cleon Cassidy or something like that. I thought it was Cletus. Cletus Cassidy. That's right. That's it. Um, you it was something. It was something Cassidy. Yeah. Though. I'm. Yeah. I'm surprised I f- remembered Cassidy. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I remember Cletus because I was like Cletus. Was Cletus. <laughs> okay. Fuck it. You know whatever. I mean, this character was created. Now that Cletus Cassidy sounds like a serial killer name. I apologize if anybody's watching's name is Cletus Cassidy, but uh It does though. Cletus sounds yeah, like does. like an evil redneck's name. No yeah. offense to Cletus's. Like uh, Ted, see, he's a he's a it sounds like a Ted Bundy motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. Um and he has like I don't know. He has like red hair and looks all messed up. I don't know. He looks like the kind of guy who would beat you up yeah. and steal yeah. your wallet, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they did a good job on his design. I don't know. Um, so, again, 
I don't think it was a particularly good movie, and it came off as an off-brand Marvel movie, because uh, even other Marvel movies, even the ones that aren't particularly good... Um, still have, like, a level of, like, quality control? Yeah, they have a, a strong quality to them, uh, and, and their writing is, at most, boring. It's never really bad, per se. Yeah, um, yeah. Right. So... And this was, def there was definitely places where it was like, this villain is like the worst written villain I've ever seen. <laughs> um, because they really leaned in, oh, I'm evil, I hate children. I, I don't know, stuff like that. But yeah, I don't care about human life. Um, so yeah, I don't know. So I, like, it's getting po kind of poor reviews. Um, and I understand why, totally. Like, I, I don't oh. disagree with a lot of the reviews. But um, you, like, had at least a fun time watching yeah, it? Yeah, I had a fun time watching it, and um, that's why the box office is, like, going crazy. It's still doing... It's doing really well. And yeah. I don't think it's just because it's Venom. I think it actually is a fun movie to watch. So, right. like, if nothing else, the chase scenes and stuff are cool, right? And then there's yeah. a whole scene where um, Venom is, like, taking out, like, 50 army dudes with guns. I, I don't know. It's cool. Yeah. That yeah. sounds neat. <clears throat> So, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like if you are in the mood for a dumb action movie, it's a good dumb action movie. Good. So. Yeah. Okay. And that's my thoughts on Venom. All yeah. right. It's not going to win any awards, though. I, didn't, I don't think I planned to see it. Um, one, thing, one thing I want to say before. If it comes to Netflix, New you York, watch it. I'm glad that my son is up in space. Where he's the farthest he can possibly be from the menace that is Spider-Man. I <laughs> sent my son into space on purpose so he could stay away from Spider-Man. Well, actually, his thing is like, city. my son is a real hero because he's an astronaut. He's doing dangerous things in outer space for our benefit. And he's a great That's person. Spider -Man. And he doesn't it's wear a mask because he's a true hero. It's stuff, yeah. yeah, He doesn't wear a mask and that's why he died. I think Spider-Man, I know like, you're listening, you motherfucker. I'll kick your ass. Uh, that was a funny thing about um, the Spider-Man video game where he yeah. was like, I have it on good authority that Spider-Man listens to my show. <laughs> um, I've, I've, um, I've watched uh, uh, someone else play through the Spider-Man game. So, like, I know the story. I haven't played it, and it looks really fun. It's, it really is really it. fun. It's one of the best, like, interpretations of, my... of that Batman Arkham style. Yeah, and, like, the well, like I even the story is a... really, really good. It is. I have a yeah. friend who's living with another buddy of his right now, and his buddy has a PS4, but he also has a PS4, so he offered to lend me his PS4. I should take him up on that and just buy a bunch of PS4 games. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, if nothing else, you should pick up uh, yeah. Spider-Man, Spider maybe like God of War. Probably probably yeah. Red Dead is uh, Red Dead is specifically why he offered to loan it to me, so we could play together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh... Oh, there was one more thing I want to talk about. Um, oh. The second after credit scene actually had kind of nothing to do with Venom. Um, uh -huh. It was a teaser for uh, Enter the Spider-Verse, which is that Sony animated picture. Yeah. And the writing for that, that looks really way good. better. Yeah. <laughs> like, everything across the board looks good on that one. So yeah, that movie looks fucking incredible. I am really excited for it. Um, That's the one where they had, like, where they have, like, all the fucking Spider-Mans all over. Yeah. Once. Yeah. So do you remember the game Web of Shadows? I do not. Uh, there was a Spider-Man game. Of it. There's a Spider-Man yeah. game called Web of Shadows, and you go, or maybe it's like Shattered Dimensions, or maybe there was multiple of, of them. Mm -hmm. But you go through and you play different versions of Spider-Man throughout a bunch of different games, and right. after, through that, like certain certain versions of Spider-Man got really popular, like the noir version of Spider-Man. Yeah. So mm -hmm. in this movie, they they showed like uh, Gwen Stacy, Spider Gwen, is oh, is yeah, a character. Gwen. Spider Ham is a character. Uh, oh God! Fucking Penny <laughs> Parker is a character. Is Penny Parker? I didn't know that they Penny showed Parker her. Penny but... Parker is straight up in. The thing. Well, they didn't show yeah. her in the teaser for this anyway. Um, uh, I think they was it the New York Comic Con trailer that came out with her. They, that oh, pre they probably like... also released a trailer in New York Comic Con for it, but there was a teaser at the end of the movie anyway. Okay. Uh, and it showed a like a, I don't know like ten minutes when Miles Morales runs into Peter Parker. So right. yeah. Um. And that looks really fucking good. Uh, yeah. And I'm really... I, it's very odd to me that um, <clears throat> Venom came out in October, and then the Spider-Verse movie is coming out in December. 
Yeah. And then, like, I, I just don't know why that is. That's kind of strange yeah. to me, but... I'm I'm super excited for Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, I want to see that, it. That yeah. Spider-Man cartoon that you really didn't like, Zane, yeah. um, did, like, like, a story arc, like, four or five episodes where he like got into it was it was a similar situation you know like all of the spider-mans got into this weird dimension thing from mysterio or some dumb shit and they all had to work together to get back to their regular universes and they had like you know there was miles morales and spider-man was like what the fuck That's you know what's my funny costume, bitch you know what's funny <laughs> is uh like every spider-man <laughs> series almost if it goes long enough does one of these like mm -hmm. even that the old 90s spider-man had a thing where um he met different versions of himself but yeah. this was before like this was before silk was a character and um this was before uh what's this like gwen spider gwen, uh, spider -Gwen. and then this was before uh this is probably way before miles morales yeah way before I'm miles morales of, uh, there's a god there's a there's a spider-man who has like actual spider powers and he's got like this black suit and i can't think of uh, I don't know like, who you're I, talking I, about because I, I, I can't think of a single Spider-Man that has actual spider powers. <laughs> There's a Spider-Man that has four are arms. You, are you thinking of the Venture Brothers Spider-Man? No, I'm not thinking of the Venture Brothers Spider-Man. Are you thinking of Man Spider, where Spider-Man turns think... into a spider? No. Similar to Man Bat. <laughs> um, yeah. No, you know what? Just keep going. I'll, I'll find it. <laughs> well, anyway, I was just saying that that looks really good and I can't wait to see it. So. Oh, Scarlet Spider. No, he doesn't actually have actual spider no he spider scarlet spider is a clone of peter parker that's it yeah his name is I'm, ben I'm, riley i'm thinking of scarlet spider anyway ben riley yeah. his his outfit was a hoodie with his, the arms cut like ripped oh uh-huh um he was <laughs> he was from uh the clone saga which is like one of the least popular spider-man arcs ever because it went on for two years and never amounted to anything i see anyway that's venom yeah, yeah. had to get into a conversation about spider-man after that yeah i love spider-man um, so much so do you guys have any video games because i have one and man it is not a gl it is not a glowing review not really uh, uh, i talked I a little bit about RimWorld, and that's basically all i've been playing i don't even know where i've been this week <laughs> it's been like a really long week for me but i don't remember any of it hardly and i didn't have any time to play video games yeah fair enough unless we want to talk about battle right which i don't but no battle right just wasn't very wasn't yeah very good. oh yeah that's right we did play battle right i yeah, mean not i feel idea. like it's a good idea for a game but i executed <laughs> bad it was fun for about 30 minutes and then we yeah. ran into where you know all of those types of pvp games become not fun Everybody yeah. else knows the good characters, and we don't. <laughs> yeah, and I just and feel like the player pool is really small. It was, yeah, and so that's the like biggest. That's the biggest the thing. Against against yeah. yeah, we had to. We had to play like, we had to have played like twenty matches, and there were like five whole teams that we fought in twenty matches. Like yeah. it was, it was not, not, not. Anyway, there's no diversity. Um, but the game that I did check out just a couple hours ago was called Card Life. Now. You're already, you're going to be, said, as soon as I describe it, you're going to be saying, why did you even bother? Cardboard Minecraft. Um, yes, Cardboard Minecraft. I Everything actually saw is built it. Out it, of cardboard. it didn't look that terrible from the trailers and stuff I was And seeing, that's the but... thing, it didn't look that terrible, and they have a lot of really good concepts, so I'll start with the good shit first, right? So, um, the first really fun thing is that every time you build something, it gives you, like, a cardboard cutout. And you can, like, shape the cardboard cutout to look like what you want. Like, it still has to have the vague shape. So, like, when you have a sword, it still gives you a vague sword outline. But within the outline of the sword, you can shape the sword however you want it to be shaped. And you can, like, cut your character out of cardboard and everything. And some things will have multiple pieces, like a a bed. I was able to shape the pillow and all four bits of the frame. Like, it, it was it was a pretty good idea, right? Um, it got a little old and I stopped kind of shaping them just because there's not really any tools to do it with. You just have to freehand everything. So it'll always wind up looking like shit unless you are good. Give it unless you are really good at freehanding. Yeah. <laughs> um now that said, um 
it also has a, some other cool mechanics that that it brings it ab- elevates it above Minecraft. Like um, like enemies actually like are a, a, a big deal instead of there's there's some skeletons walking around at night. I uh, watched very find... briefly, and it did look uh-huh. like there was a decent amount of enemy variety. Yeah, there's a huge enemy variety. Um, one of the things that was a big draw of it for me was that enemies, like special enemies, there would be elite enemies, and when you kill them, they drop souls, which give you, which you can equip their souls and get extra stats. So it kind of gave gave you like an RPG type of feeling, right? It rather than just you know, in order to get stronger, killing enemies doesn't matter at all. You just have to craft better armor. Killing enemies is worthless. It so it, it gave you the feeling of of progressing by by killing stuff, and that was the fun concept that they had. Now here's where it falls apart, and I I like I've been cardboard. thinking about it and thinking about it. Yeah, like like wet cardboard. <laughs> I've been thinking about it a lot in the last hour or so, and the specific place that it falls apart is their world generation so you know how in minecraft right what do you what is it that your your main goal is to progress your like materials and stuff you need to go down into the earth right and one of the things you can do in minecraft is dig down until you find a cave and that'll that'll be nice and nice and good right you'll find a cave you'll explore it and you can explore that one cave that you've dug down to for like miles like, basically, the entire cave system is interconnected. But let's say that you didn't know that there was a cave system under the world in Minecraft. You wouldn't think to dig straight down until you found a cave. You would just think, oh, that's that's a waste of my time. How am I even going to get back up? But there will be an entrance to a cave on the surface. You'll go into the cave, and you'll start exploring, and you'll just go deeper and deeper and deeper, and then you'll finally be like, oh, there's a whole huge cave system under this world. Card life does not adequately do that. The reason I knew that I should dig down in order to get to caves is because I've played Minecraft, right? The problem is there is no... I have, I have I played for two straight hours and I never once found an entrance to a cave that would lead into the underworld cave system. And when I did dig that, finally give up and dig down to get into a cave system... um. I would normally find, like, a globe, like an outcropping of a cave, and then I would have to continue digging to find more more of the cave, which is not, like, that's not ideal. Part of the fun is exploration. You don't want to, you don't want to have to dig to get to these rare materials. You want to explore for them, right? Like, sure, digging might be more efficient, but having to do that is just kind of unfun. And... What makes it more unfun is that it's not generated in blocks. It's not like chunks, right? It's, it, it is made of like circular cutouts of cardboard. So when you dig, you dig out a big circle. Problem with that is that the game is so slippery that in order to like, in Minecraft, if you want to make stairs up, you do two blocks high, one step higher, right? In this game, if you... <laughs> If you're trying to dig upwards, it is such an enormous pain in the ass because you have to like dig out like specific steps of the stairwell and like you have to like know where to aim at. And if there's not, if like say there's open air up here, but this is too high for you to jump, if you dig in front of you, it will just cut out another circle and then it'll be too high for you to jump up except it's a step ahead now. So you have to find the exact right spot to dig, and you have to dig out, like, 30 or 40 nodes to get one step up higher. And the collision with the terrain is so atrocious that even being at a lower elevation than where you want to be, it could take you a good 5 to 10 minutes to get up the side of a mountain or or something like that. It, it's just... And are you not able to place blocks, or...? You you can place blocks, but the blocks place strangely as well. Like you have to aim at the the just the right spot to to place them in such a manner that you want to go. Like it is borderline impossible to make flat terrain. You just cannot do it because when you place your blocks, it'll just depending on the elevation of the block under it, it will place it even higher elevated, and you can't. You can't dig it out so that it's flat because you have to dig 
from the right elevation. So it, it, it's really hard to explain. So like, say, I, th I think that makes sense. Yeah. You, you, you dig out a particular amount of dirt every time you dig. Right. But the elevation is not in blocks. It's in like steps, like very small steps. Mm -hmm. And you can't dig out just one step. You have to dig out like four or five steps at a time. So if there's like a bit of terrain here, that's five block, five steps high and a bit of terrain here. That's eight steps high. You'll never ever be able to get this eight step high terrain down to five steps high. It's impossible. Hmm. So they, well, one thing that they really, really need to work on is their terrain generation and terraforming. Like, I think the game would be playable long enough that I could experience more of it if they just worked on the terrain generation. Like, those are the two glaring problems, and they are such glaring problems that I can't even say you should play this game right now. So, assuming they, they tighten those two things up, right, is mm. there anything in the game that makes it interesting at all, other than maybe like, some of the combat stuff? Like, is... <clears throat> um. Nothing, nothing stellar over something like Minecraft. Um, it's it's really those those two things I covered at the beginning. The fact that you can kind of do cutouts of everything. So like when you're building a house, right? You build a wall, and then it lets you cut out the wall. It lets you design the wall how you want it to be. So you can like cut. You could have five walls around your place, and one of them could have like a portcullis in it that you could shoot through if something's trying to raid your base or something, you know? And then the rest of them are totally so, enclosed. So, basically, um... Oh, the dogs are barking in. So, basically, uh... Well, because you were saying placing blocks wasn't that easy either, so... Like, is... Um, are you able to build, so, like, buildings so, fairly easily? Yeah, is that yeah, kind you, of the draw of you, it? You build buildings a la, like, Rust or Ark... They, they they kind of snap together or you can freeform build them. So so the actual building of the buildings themselves is actually really tight. It, it it just it works, everything snaps together, or it can't not snap together if you hold down a button. Um so so the building is really good as far as like, you know, castles or or uh houses stuff like that because you what you do is you you craft your materials into a wall that you may then place and snap together as opposed to minecraft where you just have to build up blocks well um, but, but if terraforming you're not, but if you're not able to get a flat plane then do you just have to like well go around and hope to find a flat plane or um they have they have like support structures so you can you can create like a flat wooden surface to place okay. and then yeah. So you can basically so, create like a foundation for a building. Yeah, exactly. You 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 make a foundation before you start building. Um Huh. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 pretty decent. So, I could see it getting good. It's like the only thing that's really holding it back is the terrain generation and terraforming system. So is it possible <clears throat> that there's more accurate terraforming stuff later on in the game or is it I don't think so. You don't think so? Um no, it just seemed like it seemed like the terraforming tools were pretty basic Minecraft stuff, you know, wood, stone, copper, iron, up to that. Um, okay. The thing that I got stuck on was finding gold, and gold can help you make machines for a drill. So the next thing I needed to do was get a golden gold drill. Um, that seemed like it may maybe it would have been more accurate but i just don't know because the way that it seemed to work was all of the tools like they did the thing like minecraft where the ground would start to crack and then a chunk would pop out so right. i don't know if the drill would have been more accurate it didn't seem like it because every upgrade didn't become more accurate i'm not even convinced it became faster i think upgraded things just gave you more materials instead of speed well, this um, game is in early access, so they could still is. tune some of the stuff. It's actually not also, even out yet. It, it's... it just just came out on Steam early access, I think. No, it unlocks in nine hours from now. Oh, okay. So you, you got it early, apparently. Yeah. yeah, I did get it early. Um, Okay. But yeah, I don't know. It doesn't sound like... like I spent a little while reading the patch notes and developer posts, and it doesn't sound like they have any intention to tighten up the terraforming or movement. Well, I mean, um, if, if this ends up being a complaint that's shared by people and i imagine it would mm -hmm. then i assume that's something that they're going to tackle because that's kind of the point of early access so yeah 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 it's true i if just anything, like it's yeah 
it's 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 just weird to me how like the the movement was my biggest issue because moving around in the thing in the world is so janky um it, it, it's just weird like i can understand how somebody might be like uh, like not thinking of putting like a cave entrance to the sprawling cave network on the surface right or or like maybe they'll think oh the random generation will handle that and they don't have anything there to force a cave entrance in places but right. I just cannot understand how somebody moved around the world and tried to like dig up and down and thought, yes, this is okay. People will not mind moving around in this fashion. And like, it's one of it, you really have to play it to understand exactly what I'm talking about, but it's just so slippery and, and like places that should be footholds. Like there were points in time where I was standing on solid ground, not moving, not touching my keyboard. And I would mine out a block which should remove terrain from the world and removing that terrain that is above me pushed me off of the foothold that I was standing. And I just slid down the side of a mountain. And it's like, there is no feasible way that somebody could have play tested that and said, that's fine. So I really hope they just didn't have time to re-examine it because it, maybe it was like pretty difficult to recode your entire movement system before your early access came out or something. Right. But hmm. man, it's bad. It's really bad. It has a lot of potential, and I can see it being a lot better than Minecraft because Minecraft is kind of boring. At least and vanilla. Has, yeah. yeah, and this this has things that seem like they're really pushing to make it less boring, but the actual way that you navigate, like, and and just I think, do things and get to places, just awful. I think part of the problem with a game like this is if it doesn't one, if it doesn't distance itself enough from minecraft then it's kind of pointless in the first place and then two there are a lot of other options <laughs> for games that are not minecraft but minecraft right right so like even even something like lego dimensions or, or lego mm. whatever that lego version of minecraft is like right that had a uh, significant differences from normal minecraft even so i i don't know like um I'm surprised that people are still trying to do Minecraft clones, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, me too. And what excited me about this one was that it actually looked more like Cube World than Minecraft, but it right. does just still have a lot of these hang ups of Minecraft. Yeah, and even Cube World, and we played a very yeah. early version of it. Um Which is obviously, still the same version. Well, yeah, they haven't I mean he's still working on it, supposedly. Whatever. <laughs> um but even then, it had some significant differences from the gameplay loop of Minecraft, even. Um, yeah. It, even taking away that you can't mess with terrain, like, exploration on the overworld was a lot different. So, you have to, like, even if you have a similar voxel kind of look, you have to do a lot to make it different from Minecraft's loop. Because Minecraft is already ahead. Like, you're never... Yeah. You, like... What? How? How do you peel people off of Minecraft if they still enjoy Minecraft's loop? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. that's about all we have for games we've played this week because it's been kind of a, I don't know, it's been a weird week for me. But yeah, pretty much all I've played is Let It Die, and my thoughts haven't changed. I love it. I got a little deeper in the tower. Yeah, I think we've all been busier than normal. Yeah, this week. I, I, I specifically went out of my way to play this game. Like, that's why I chose it. It was one of those games offered to me on Keymailer. So I, I went out mm -hmm. of I was like, I'll just pick one of these and play it. So it was. I think it's know. good to do stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah. It anyway. just wasn't a good. Uh, wasn't a game. good game. Got yeah. unlucky. <laughs> yep. All right. So we're going to uh, go ahead and have a break for a little bit and then we'll come back for news. All so right. that's a lot of. Yeah, there's actually a pretty good amount of news. So do you want to just six minutes and come back right at five, or do you want a little bit longer? Sounds good. I can do six minutes. Okay. And we will come back at five o'clock. Okay. Uh, if I can... Oh, I turned off NumLock earlier. Okay. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. There we go. All right, we're back. So, for the second half of the show, we're going to talk about game and movie news. I have no idea which one we want to start with this week. I can't see. 
Uh, there's a lot of movie news. There we go. Why don't we start with games, since there seems to be a little bit less of it? Maybe? Well, that sounds good. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. I feel like we'll, we're more likely to get in conversations for the other one, so. It's true. Yeah. Um, although, actually, now that I'm scrolling up even more. Uh, new XCOM 2 DLC? Ah, right. I totally forgot about that. That was this week still. <laughs> yes. They you... did ask release a new XCOM 2 DLC. They announced it, like, earlier this week, and it's coming out, like... This week. Yeah, this week. Yeah. Oh, earlier so... last week, yeah. So it's an extra little story that goes in between Enemy Unknown and XCOM 2. Um, oh, fuck. It has a bunch of new equipment and stuff from the original XCOM games. Like... UFO defense and stuff. Uh, okay. And I believe they also are releasing a new mode or something? Yeah, new mode uh, Legacy Ops, which allows you to command a squad of soldiers through a series of linked consecutive tactical missions. Ah, uh, yes, as opposed to doing the, like, base management sim in between. God, that almost sounds better to me. Because I got yeah. bored of the base management sim, which is funny, because I like management sims, typically. Yeah. Well, the base the problem with the base management sim in XCOM is that it's more about managing your base in such a way that you don't fall behind the alien's tech level. Yeah. Yeah. It, I almost would rather have those two games separate, where I have either the base management where I'm competing with other bases, or the tactical combat where I'm doing tactical shit. Right. But that's just me, and I've never been that big a fan of uh, XCOM, really, so... It looks like they're also adding 28 new maps. Yeah, the, um, which are remastered maps from the original XCOM. Uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown. And and Enemy Within, apparently. Right. Um, and then, once you do Central Archives, you get uh, reimagined versions of different weapons and armor and stuff. Um, oh, so cool. a lot of the original XCOM stuff is coming back because of it. Good. Um, yeah. So that's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. Also, if you already own XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, you will get it for free starting when it comes tomorrow out. Tomorrow if you're live, yesterday if you're watching the upload. Yeah. October 9th. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So our next topic, uh RimWorld 1.0. It's going to come out on the October 17th. Yes. Uh, get which... it. Yeah. Uh, it's mostly just gonna be bug fixes, because, uh, long story short, uh, Beta 19 was very much what 1.0 was going to be as far as, like, content and stuff was related. Uh, he wanted to do a couple of bug fixes and, you know, shore it up before he released it as 1.0. And probably right. some sort of, um, uh, like, optimization pass, probably. Yeah, yeah. So there's probably yeah. a lot of things that was under the hood that didn't really change anything, but... Yeah. Okay. But beta 19 is content-wise what we should expect. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the only significant new feature is a food restriction system that allows you to determine what your colonists and prisoners are allowed to eat. Okay. Which I think you could already do in mods, but... <laughs> I thought you could already do that in the base game. Okay, weird. I don't well, know. Uh, prisoners, prisoners definitely, but maybe not... No, you can only uh, do like that for colonists. medicine. Not, not prisoners either. You could only do it for okay. medicine. Weird. Yeah. Yeah, normally we don't just go through a bunch of uh, releases, but there are a lot of releases right now that matter to us. So mm -hmm. yeah, and the next Especially... one is X Four Foundations. Yeah, uh, which got a release date before fucking Mountain Blade Two somehow. Uh, so yeah, X Four Foundations. I said it was like last week or the week before or something. I was like, oh, by the way, yeah, X apparently X Four is coming out this year. Uh, it got a release date like yesterday or something. Yeah, November thirtieth. Uh, yeah, November 30th, 2018, it's going to release, and it's going to be a buggy fucking mess, just like all of uh, Egosoft's games when they release. But then it's they're going to fix it, and it's going to be great. The problem with uh, fucking the previous X game, X Rebirth, is because it had, like, a lot of problems that were just, like, with the base game. Like, the fact that you could only ever be in the one ship. They changed it from Gates to this weird, like, spaceship highway. And um, they focused a lot of on the story when the X Games have never had really good stories. And this one, they're focusing a lot more on the simulation, the space sim aspect of their fucking space sim. 
and a lot of the new features look really cool. Hopefully, uh, the things like uh, getting in and out of ships and stuff and being able to buy stuff and shoring up space stations won't be as horribly boring as they were in X Rebirth, where it's like, yeah, getting out of your ship and going into space stations and exploring them, that sounds really cool. It's the fucking worst thing ever. It's cool the first time you do it, but after that, fuck no. But yeah, I'm so, excited. So it comes out November 30th, but from what Fel was saying, maybe you should wait until yeah. January or something after uh, some of the other high-profile games come out. Yeah. Right. But it's up to you. Yeah. Anyway. I'm probably going to play it immediately. I'll wait. I'll wait and see how, like, you know. Yeah, you, you'll give us an update on how buggy it is, right? Yeah. Right. All right. Uh, the next game, or the next thing we're talking about is... Um, so Microsoft is uh, talking about this cloud gaming service, uh... which is kind of interesting. Here, um, Microsoft Cloud. <laughs> which is kind of interesting because really not that long ago, Google was talking about the same thing. Right. Um... In a way, the kind of the cool thing about this is uh, it essentially streams full games to, like, phones. Like, Android phones. <laughs> so, right. you with Bluetooth pairing with their Xbox controllers, you could be playing, like, Halo on your phone at good graphics. Right. Um, latency is an issue, potentially, but... Eh. I don't know. It really depends on what's happening. I don't know, especially happening. for games like Halo, like where Twitch reflexes are really important. Well, it's... I don't know that Twitch reflexes are that important. Like, for like uh, PvP, sure. But, like, PvE stuff, um, the console, console shooters tend to be a little bit forgiving anyway. So It's true. I don't know. I think stuff like Forza makes more sense. Potentially, yeah, right. yeah. Um, and then they're talking about having like a weird controller contraption thing huh. that holds your phone on a controller. Oh no, people, people have tried to do cloud gaming for like ever, and it's never ever launched, never taken. Well, off. yeah, but the like thing it. is, um, until recently, n the people trying to do it weren't equipped to have the infrastructure and ability to throw money at something that probably won't make a profit for a long time um, until now, because Microsoft and, and Google are the kinds of people who can throw money at this. So Yeah. And not only that, but that's what a lot of people said about VR. That's true. Well, VR kind of is that way a little bit still. Well, yeah. VR was, VR was kind of like the opposite, like not the opposite problem, but it was a different problem, whereas with cloud gaming, like, it never took off because, like, the technology was there and people just didn't like it, right? It, like, people would just rather own the video game. Well, no, that's console. not the problem. The problem yeah. is the technology wasn't there because it really came down to latency. Right. If you have sub one millisecond latency, it's, it's or, or not sub, but greater than, like, one to three millisecond latency, it feels bad. Right. And yeah. it, that's not... and. Then, on top of that, in order to even get there, you have to have a good interconnect internet connection in the first place. So this right. is only really a kind of a niche product anyway for, right. for people who have that good internet. And then on mm -hmm. top of that, the latency has to be good enough that you don't like get hurt by it too much, right? Well, part of the problem part of the problem is isn't it's not necessarily latency on like their end. Like, how are you going to play a game on your phone, like, on the bus, where you're streaming the video and streaming the I don't think the, the intention, I don't like think the intention is to do it on the bus, per se. I think the intention... what's the point of having it on your phone? It's for people who don't have PCs, don't have good PCs. It's not for us, obviously. It's for yeah. people who either don't have a console or don't have a PC but have the the amount for a subscription fee for whatever service they want to do i well, guess if they, if they don't have a console or a pc why do they have an internet connection i i don't know it's it's like using your data for that i don't well, know i mean you know let's assume that they have like a macbook and that's it yeah or or they have a good internet connection for netflix yeah and that that was why they have it like so i i don't know it's it's hard to say that like if you don't okay if you're like me right 
Um, right. And I don't have an Xbox One, but right. I want to play Halo, which is not okay. an, on the PC. Right. I could uh. still use my PC to stream Halo from an Xbox One through their cloud service. Right. Okay. So I, I, there is some use cases for it, but it's <laughs> just I like it really comes down to the latency, and the only way you're going to be able to solve that problem is by throwing money at it and hoping you're right. in a market with good internet. Luckily, my internet's pretty good, so yeah. it might work for me, or it might not. I don't, I don't know, but it's just one of those things. It, 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 if we're going to get there, then there's two sides of the problem. One side's on Microsoft's end, and one side, or Google's end, or whoever, and one side's on uh, the consumer's end with their internet connection, and unless they live in a large city, they might not have a chance to play this anyway so right we'll see how it shakes out but i don't know i don't think it's a useless idea i just there are a lot of problems with it and it's likely right, going yeah. to not be good yeah yeah um skybound games is uh acquiring telltales the walking dead and will finish the final season for them okay oh boy um oh, they have good writers what else has Skybound Unless games Unless it's already been written. Skybound the... Games. I don't know. They sound familiar. Skybound. Uh, I looked it up, and I'm only seeing the recent news. <laughs> I see. Let's see. Uh, Oxenfree? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, 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 all right, it's that's their style anyway. Then yeah, they also do a lot of TV shows. <laughs> oh, okay. Huh. Well, if they do TV shows, then they should have somebody who can write something. Yeah, because I'm looking here and it's like, yeah, under titles it lists like the Walking Dead TV series. Okay, Skybound what? Entertainment is the company okay. founded by Robert Kirkman. Okay. Robert Kirkman right. is the creator of Walking Dead. So basically, he bought the rights to make the game, and his subdivision out uh, games is going to make the final season for him. I guess. Okay. That makes right. sense. Yeah. They don't. Ha they haven't done a lot of games, but they have done a lot of shows. So. Right. Okay. Probably should have done a little bit of that research earlier, but you know. Yeah. Well, you know. Um, and more in Telltale tale, tale, tale news is they just laid off the last of the <laughs> remaining employees. Um, originally, they were going to keep a skeleton crew of around 25 or so people to finish up Minecraft story mode <clears throat> for Netflix, but apparently um, because of the circumstances in which they laid, out all, laid all the previous people off, um, they're now being sued by several of them and they're not able to pay any of those lawsuits for obvious reasons, so now they're just shuddering. And all those people, yeah. all the leftover people are laid off. That sucks. So it seems like um, Telltale is people. essentially like going to actually fuck be closed for real now. Yeah. So Well, fuck them. They did this to themselves. <laughs> ah, yeah. Poor business decisions. Yeah, that's what happens. Yep. Play shitty games, win shitty prizes. Yeah. <sighs> Oops, I left it on Skybound Games for a while, but that's fine. Oh, well. Um, the next thing is Blizzard Entertainment. Uh, they named uh, a new president, yeah. Yeah, uh, Alan, or J. Alan Brack from World of Warcraft. So okay. the president and co-founder, Mike Moraham, is shifting to a new role, and the successor is... Alan Black, J. Allen Black, who was the, the ex executive producer of World of Warcraft. Yes. Huh. Um, he's been with uh Blizzard for twelve years and he's best known for contrib uh, his contributions to WoW. Uh he's yeah. the one who announced World of Warcraft Classic. Yeah, he's the guy who's like at BlizzCon talking about World of Warcraft all the time. Yeah. Well, one of the people, because <laughs> one of them. There are a lot of them. Yeah, um, so yeah, I don't know. He seems like a cool dude. I hope he does good. He says the teams are working on more games than now than ever before. So 
you know. Makes sense. Yeah. So that's kind of a big news, but um, doesn't really affect anyone directly. Not necessarily. Not yet, anyway. Yes, I'm going to jump around to something else. Okay. Uh, Atlas. I don't know. Atlas USA. Atlas USA is uh, also welcoming a new president and CEO, who is also going to be the COO as well, (laughs) uh, from Sega. So the current president and COO of Sega is now going to be the president and COO of Atlas USA. Wow. Um, I guess this person is going to be a, a double COO. Um, Sega of America has worse track record than Atlas USA, but at the same time, Atlas USA has some weird stuff going on with how they do certain things things most things yeah well i wouldn't say most things because generally atlas is pretty good atlas usa in particular is pretty good um sega west is the one who does weird things with journalists and flagging youtube videos and stuff so i don't know if wasn't atlas the company that, wasn't atlas the company that said it was illegal to stream or upload videos of persona 5 at all yes and still is well no they softened it no actually it they never it was never illegal to ever stream it it was like they had very specific rules like you could not stream it past a certain date in the game and you still can't uh except they pushed back the date to a later date so now you can only stream to like a date towards the end of the game but that doesn't include the ending stuff like that it's it's atlas doesn't usually do that stuff but right atlas japan uh was so concerned about certain things that they forced that on atlas usa so atlas usa kind of did it because they had to not because they wanted to and that is the only situation where they did anything weird like that um sega of america is not that nice of a company by comparison um but at the same time like sega of america is like they don't really fight with streamers or anything it's it's just like they'll do things like um send takedown notices for a bunch of stuff to change the search results for things like they they do weird shit like that so (laughs) that being said i don't necessarily know that the coo and ceo changing and the you know the president changing will affect any of those rules it's just yeah um it's just kind of weird maybe a concern is is all i'm saying right uh okay the next thing i want to talk about is fallout 76 this is kind yeah, of a small is, thing. It's a very tiny little tidbit, but um, Fallout 76 is going to have Red Dead-style treasure maps. It's uh, l- looks like a little hand-drawn piece of paper that is like a drawing of a place in the world, and you have to go there to find the treasure. And there's like a little X on it. It's It seems pretty nifty. I actually really like that mechanic, because instead of just being like... It gives me hope, because instead of being like... Fallout 3, where it's like, you found a treasure map, and there's a riddle, and you have to solve the riddle, and then you go into your quest tracker and mark the quest, and just go to the place that the marker says. I I really hope that they don't just give you a quest marker for this location in the world. I hope that you have to, like, know of the location, and then go and track it down. That would be much more nifty. Everything I've seen about Fallout 76 so far has been a bit more um, freeform in general, so... Yeah. I'm not really that worried about it. Right. Um, I think Fallout 76 is really shaping out to be really interesting, and I can't I wait to play it. It looks really good. Except I might not get into the beta, depending on how things go. Right. Um, so the next thing is, uh, remember that author of The Witcher? <sighs> mm-hmm. He's yeah. asking for more money. Again! Well, it's not again, because in the past he's just complained about it. Now he's actually going to sue because there's a bunch of Polish copyright laws that he's talking about and he's saying that maybe the original contract they signed was illegal and that like currently the um like the deal he had set up with uh C Project Red in the past um like, it made so much m- more money that, like, there was such a gross decrep- discrepancy that, in- according to Polish law, you can potentially sue for what lost 
income because of the discrepancy in in the expected profit or whatever um right. in addition he's saying that also potentially depending on how the contracts are written maybe uh that their original contract only applies to the first witcher game um is, not, is that not witcher 2 or 3 that depending on how the contracts are written or is that um because if that, he doesn't even okay. know how his own fucking contract well no it's it's definitely his lawyers no talking about it it's yeah. not him talking about it okay. but but there is some gray area and i don't know if they're specifically suing that but there's negotiations talking about that originally um these were letters sent directly to P uh, cd project red and they weren't going to be public but cd okay. project red is actually the ones who made it public by releasing this information in a press release so um in their press release, CD, CD Projekt Red states that they believe the filing is a baseless as the terms of the original contract have been fulfilled and they are open to negotiations so long as previously agreed uh, contracts remain intact. So it's likely to go to court, and I guess we'll see how this shakes out. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, it's I also worth noting that... Um, the writer admitted that CD Projekt Red offered him a percentage of the profits when they signed the deal, and he refused because he thought the game would be a failure. Yeah. That's how the story goes. Fucked up, my man. Yeah, allegedly. Wait, you, you underestimated the power of another medium, you bitch. Welcome to the future, slut. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> he claimed that the standard royalties for something like that is... 5 to 15 percent so that is what he is claiming he would get so i don't know yeah um but i don't know cd project red is up to negotiation uh, up for negotiations too so this might not even make it to court depending too because they might just settle outside anyway who knows um okay so the next thing is uh an update for our Steam adult games thing. thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The uh, ongoing debacle. I wouldn't even call it debacle, but they're, they're kind of ongoing update to their terms of use for what games can make it onto Steam. Yeah. Uh, apparently they've removed over 170 <laughs> more games in addition to even more previously. Uh... Yeah. And they're just kind of like sort of asset flips with boobs in them, mostly. Yeah, I, I just, I find it so funny that like immediately when they said, you know what, porn games are okay, you can release them, that immediately they came out with a whole shit ton of things such as Home Alone Girlfriend, Boobs Battlegrounds, uh, Putin, Trump, and Boobs, and, and all of these were like deemed unfit for Steam because they weren't even games. Why are they removing true art from Steam is my question. I believe that this is unjust. Yeah, I am so I'm I'm like zero percent surprised about that, like at all. Yeah, it's, it's, Steam gave like a green light and all these motherfuckers were like, Alright, go, 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 you get out there, you get out there, make sure you get that fucking game in. Make sure it's at least half finished. We need to get these fucking games and we need to rake in the twenty two cents it costs to make these games. We're gonna be charging them a fucking dollar for it. Bring it in! I'm, and, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy. I love it. It's terrible. Yeah, and they just they just got rid of all of it. So, yeah, here... Uh, I, I just really want to read this quote from uh, something they had said in their Steam blog. Mm -hmm. uh, you're it, kind of clarifying about what they mean by straight-up trolling. Uh, you're a denizen of the internet, so you know that trolls come in all forms. On Steam, some are simply trying to rile people up with something we call a game-shaped object, a crudely made piece of software <laughs> that technically and just barely passes our bar as a functioning video game, but isn't what 99% or 99.9% .9 of folks would say is good. Some trolls are trying to scam folks out of their Steam inventory items. Others are looking for a way to generate small amount of money off of Steam through a series of schemes that revolve around how we let developers use Steam keys, and others are just trying to incite and sow discord. <laughs> So yeah. apparently that's what they mean by straight up trolling. Yeah. Which so, seems I'm reasonable sorry. to me. 
I, yeah. I love the phrase a series of schemes. <laughs> I like the phrase game shaped objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's objects perfect. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, we kind of knew this would get, was going to happen when they oh, first yeah. did this, and yeah, it, I mean, it it's, takes it's a little obvious. while to equalize. So. I just, uh, like, like I find it funny that it comes, like, right in the wake. They're like, okay, you can put pictures of titties on Steam now, we don't care. And then everybody just made a bunch of games that were sold just on the fact that they had boobs in the title, basically. Player unknown titty grounds. Yeah, exactly. Like, Okay, so now we're going to move on to movie news. Um, I'm going to take the reins this time because I want to rearrange things a little bit because there's so much uh, New York Comic Con stuff. Okay. So why don't we start with uh, Mandy? Uh, man. oh, oh, we're gonna start it there. Okay, all right. Uh, so yeah, uh, Mandy is doing so well in theaters that it has forced the distributor to rethink the way it does. Uh, if you didn't know, one of the things about Mandy, which is fucking crazy, and this has never worked for any other movie before in the history of since they started doing this, is that the day that Mandy released, um, in theaters, and this was a very limited release. Like, I couldn't find a fucking place that was playing it to save my life. The reason it released in, uh, it released at the same time in theaters as it released on, like, multiple streaming services. Uh, mm. Google Play was one of them, you know, which is connected to fucking YouTube. I'm pretty sure it released on Apple. Um, yeah. And uh, the movie did really fucking good in theaters, too, though. So, yeah. That's really interesting. I wonder if that means that um, eventually they're going to start shortening that window between release and theaters because yeah. they've already been shortening it more and more over time now yeah. now sometimes it's like a month before the blu-ray comes out mm -hmm. and what they're saying is uh rather than following the you know that model they might just follow this model of we're going to release it at the same time and we're going to release it in the theaters because and you know that'd be good for me i'm not like uh i i don't have like any preference either way about it i, would, I feel like if i'm going to see a movie in the theaters then i'm going to see it in the theaters and if i'm not then i'm just gonna wait but if i have like that choice then i'll i, I will do one or the other rather right. than just spending the time it takes to not get there you know what i'm saying if it's a movie that i think or kind of know that it will be good or that i'll like i'll prefer to see it in the theater yeah. personally yeah. so mm -hmm. i probably would see mandy in the theaters even if it did came come out on google play or whatever yeah. so and see, this is great and i would have except because... it's not playing anywhere so so one of the reasons that i say i never see movies is because i never go out to see movies and you guys are always like oh well, you can just wait till it releases but i by that time nobody else wants to see the movie because everybody saw it in theaters so the fact that they like like this could right, shorten you that window. Watched Mandy three times. You always said no. I'm calling oh. you out. <laughs> I don't want to watch Mandy, but that's not the. Point. I asked you want to watch Black Panther fifteen times. You said no. I really don't want to watch Black Panther. I hate that character. We've been over this. Well, yeah, it's a you, really good movie. Yeah, you should watch watch it anyway because it's good. <clears throat> but. My, my made it because point... of a shitty cartoon. Plus, plus it's important because of uh, how, you know how it interacts my, with my Infinity point... War. Yeah. My, my, my point was just what you guys already said, so just move on to the next stupid topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We should watch Black Panther also. Yeah. Uh, El Tonto. El so, Tonto. yeah, Kate Blanchett, Jason Sudeikis, and uh, oh, yeah, Charlie yeah, yeah, yeah. Day. Right, right, sorry. The thing that's really uh, interesting about this is this is following in the new uh, tradition of, uh, like, television actors coming out of the woodworks and having fucking directorial debuts. And this is Charlie Day's directorial debut, which I'm excited for. Um, fucking uh, John Christoph... Fucking... Fucking Jim Halpert's directorial debut was yeah. great. Uh, he came out with fucking A Quiet Place. And you had also uh, I said yeah. also I said Kate Blanchett I meant Kate Beckinsale. Yeah. Oh yeah, different mm. person. So Kate right. Beckinsale is going to be in that movie, yes. Right. Yes. Um, fucking yeah, you, you had you had John Krasinski's fucking. Wait, no, I'm thinking of that. That's the animator guy who does fucking can <laughs> cans without labels. God damn it! I was I'm close. 
The point is... The guy who plays day, Jim Halpert right. in The Office. The guy who plays That's Jim Halpert in The Office, not the Rin and Stimpy man who has never made a thing in his life on time. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie Day, from Always Sunny in Philadelphia, is also directing a movie. Yeah, he's directing a movie, and that's the cool thing about Usually this. Usually these movies that, that these, like, these weird television series actors come out and make always wind up good, so. Yeah. Like, fucking Eighth Grade is one of my favorite <laughs> movies of this year. I feel Bo like Burnham, this is... Some guy who started on YouTube. I feel like this is now the logical progression for most people. It's not just, like, TV. It's, like, actors in general kind of want to make it to director at some oh, point yeah. most of the time, yeah. it seems like, so... Yeah. It just seems have, like a natural progression, independent it, of yeah, what it does, how good of an actor it does, they are. It does not. It, it's it's not just like a career thing either. It seems like a natural progression, like from a psychological standpoint, I guess. Like if you're 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 acting in a piece of something, you also would want to create your own thing too, right? Right. Yeah. Like that's sensible. Um, yeah. and I don't know, like uh, like what's his face? Ben Affleck is kind of a better director than he's an actor, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Which is why I was excited to see him direct a Batman movie, but he's fucking done with that shit. <laughs> We're going to move on to New York Comic Con. Oh Speaking boy. of Batman. Lots of stuff came out. We're going to talk about a lot of trailers, so. Yeah. And that's probably going to be like the last chunk of what we're talking about. The first thing I want to talk, the first one I want to talk about is um, Harley Quinn animated series. Yeah. yeah, that's did you guys watch exciting. it? I did watch the trailer. The trailer. There's a little teaser. Yeah, most of like the one yeah, yeah, trailer, trailer that I didn't I'm, watch. I'm ex I'm 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 excited for it as a Harley Quinn thing. I like the character designs that they've put that they've they've put in for um Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn that they showed off. However, I have to say the animation looks really really stiff, and it is just a scene so. of her sitting there talking. I don't think it's I, that stiff. I think it looks stiff. It's like they're 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 standing there static, their mouth is moving, and then during the middle of their uh sentence, they just kind of move their head a little bit and continue talking stiffly with just their mouth moving. And it, it like it's like that through the whole thing. I, I don't know if that's really a fair complaint because that's not any different than a lot of these when they're having a conversation. I I think if anything, they're moving kind of a lot <laughs> for having just a conversation in a cell. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like this show has like been kind of a long time oh, coming. That's great. That, I'm glad. That that said though, it looks like it's it looks like it's going to be like kind of a more like comedic take on on stuff like that is they even make a joke about it in the trailer poison ivy's like wait a second this is gonna be funny i thought we were gonna make a d a bleak and depressing dark universe like a dc thing yeah and then <laughs> and then carly or harley quinn looks straight at the camera and like looks off to the side and like yes that's a great way to make films <laughs> or something yeah. like that so they like even zing right on the dc movies and stuff too so i don't know it, it seems like it could be pretty cool um and i i guess what for me, it, it looks similar enough to the Bruce Timm style that I don't yeah. think that it looks that weird. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. And that's the thing. I, I feel like I feel like if they're going back to the Timiverse, that's what DC <laughs> should be doing. That's that yeah, was my I'd, point with that. Yeah, most of the DC animated universe was written really well. Yeah. I say most, but uh, yeah. so I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't, maybe maybe they're just like. These cartoon writers don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. We need to hire write, bigger names for all our, our movies they write like cartoons, Zack Snyder. Cartoons dumb. Yeah, we need to write, hire bigger names. We need to hire that uh like that guy who wrote the Transformers movie. He knows what he's doing. That Kurtzman and Orsi never worked on DC. Strangely enough. You'd think they would have by now. They're too busy ruining Star Trek. Yep. Anyway, let's move on to a different animated thing. Uh, DreamWorks She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Yeah. So this, uh, this is the yeah. thing that's been kind of on my radar since I heard it get announced because it feels like the kind of thing that you would almost expect to be bad, but because mm. it's so far removed from the time mm. period that it comes from, you have to reimagine so much of it that it yeah, could yeah. only end up being good. Yeah. Kind of like what happened with ML with My Little Pony, right? 
Right. Um, it was something that was kind of just sitting around forever, and they decided to reimagine it and update it for a more current time. So. Right. Now, see, what surprises me is that they went with for She-Ra before He-Man. Um, I think from a social standpoint, it makes more sense. Yeah. And, I, uh, uh, plus, He-Man's gotten like 13 adaptations since then. He's gotten at yeah, least one that was in like the early 2000s or something. Well, I think the reason why for me is like, um, <sighs> there seems to be less emphasis, uh, less emphasis on like male masculinity and more on female empowerment just generally yeah, right. culturally so it yeah, makes right. sense for them to want to do she-ra who is was kind of a female empowerment thing back then but yeah now we kind of have a different view on that whereas yeah. he-man is just kind of dude getting what, dude yeah dude who gets buffer so yeah. that's always just been kind of there. And there have been, you like Fel said, there have been a couple of reboots of that anyway. So it makes sense for them to go with She-Ra. Watching this trailer, the animation looks great. Yeah. I think the animation looks really good. I I can't put my finger on it, so don't ask me to support this, but something about the actual art style just looks really off-putting to me, though. Really? I, 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 I cannot place it. Like, the... The animation looks phenomenal. The art style just looks really weird. I don't know if it's like the weight of the lines or the fact that it looks like it. It, it looks like I a know what you're Western talking cartoon. about, but I can't well, elaborate I, on yeah, it either. Yeah, it looks like a Western cartoon trying really, really hard to look like it's an anime. Maybe I just I don't, I don't know. I don't even think it's but that. But it doesn't look right. Yeah, it's it's just it's just a little bit funky, just a teeny bit. There's just like yeah. this tiny little funky thing in there that i can't put my finger Oops, on i changed it but i the see it there I'm messing up i th i feel like maybe there you go i don't know i don't think it looks that bad personally it looks oh i don't think it looks bad i just no, think it's it, like, it, it, there's it, something it, weird with it i don't it know it reminds me it reminds me of something else and i can't place what it reminds me of but the thing it reminds me of brings back bad memories do you know what it reminds me of personally what? it looks like a more saturated version of avatar it kind of looks a little, a little bit. bit like uh, Ultron, just a teeny it, bit. Every, you know, Voltron? everything is yeah. yeah. Voltron, not, yeah. That's not the problem I have with it though. Every everything in it is like really, really bright and super colorful. Well, that's what I mean. Which it's I don't sat, think is intrinsically bad. Yeah, it, it looks like Avatar if it was saturated to the extent of Steven Universe. Right, it, it looks like Avatar. If it and I yeah, think, and I think that's fine. I think, but I think yeah. that might be what it is. Like the the colors and the the color scheme and stuff reminds me a lot of Steven Universe, and yet it's it's a yeah no that's that's exactly it. It looks like Avatar, like a Western style anime kind of deal, but it has really saturated like pretty colors, like Steven Universe does. Well, and the, I mean, it's, I and it's not really all really saturated because it's it's like there is saturation, but there's also a lot of pastels. <laughs> So I don't yeah. like I don't know. I think it looks fine. It just might be for you you're almost expecting something more like Avatar but it's not. Yeah. Or yeah, I'm, so uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I know it's Shira I'm expecting something that looks more like a love letter to the 80s. <laughs> yeah. You're looking I for a more I, 80s color palette yeah. and it's not 80s enough for you? Yeah, maybe. I I just I don't know. I really like I said I really can't place it. Yeah. <laughs> But well, I'm I'm that that said I'm not like like uh, all I said was negative but I'm really excited for it. The animation looks great and it looks I'm excited to see like I like that art style. A she raw series, yeah. <clears throat> um okay, so the next thing is Daredevil season 3. Um this is the only one that I like the only show that I decided to talk about that was uh like a, a third, a third okay. season or yeah. a, a season yeah. past a first season, but it's because we've talked about it a lot. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Thel, did you watch the trailer for this one? Yeah, this one I actually oh. watched uh, like uh, a couple days ago. Uh, I'm pretty excited, especially yeah. with how good Luke Cage season two was. If they like put <clears throat> that amount of we can do whatever we want into Daredevil, I mean, and and we got Wilson Fisk coming back. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Wilson Fisk is yeah, getting out of prison. That. Like that's that's the that's the main takeaway that I got from the trailer. Uh, Fisk is getting out of prison, and it's going to be focusing on Kingpin again. And 
Hell yeah, buddy. Yeah, like Kingpin really made season one of Daredevil shine like a diamond. King, uh, so Kingpin like... is still like my favorite villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I think yeah. that what, what's great about this is um, they've transitioned from like it was very kind of important that season two didn't have Kingpin in it. Yeah. To kind of make the weight of se- of him being locked up in season one work and then for him to be released in season three so like we all kind of knew eventually he would get out of prison but um this was kind of a very important step for season two yeah it's not i just wish that they balanced season two better yeah Yeah. it's not like they went from season one and then been like oh it's been five years since we put wilson frisk away and now he's out right in the first episode of season two like that would have been plus between season two and uh the defenders they did a good job of moving matt murdoch into a different place yeah uh, emotionally and yeah. like now this next season we're gonna see um matt murdoch kind of at his worst and yeah. in the comics this is like right around the time where electra dies mm. um oh boy thank god thank for the, god for the second time before oh, being resurrected no. for the third Ra's al Ghul, you motherfucker Stop that. Uh, Stop that. Well, a different universe. Yeah, yeah no, I, know. I think Electra has died Marvel's and come Ra's back. Yeah, I think yeah. Di- Electra has died and come back more times than most characters. But yeah. but now, that said, you can't say that the hand and Ra's al Ghul's little bullshit things are not basically the same thing. Oh, yeah. Got a League of Shadows in the hand. Yeah, I mean, yeah, kind of, the but... <laughs> so they're an different, they're different bents. They're different bents, yeah. though. Um, yeah, but there's still an Marvel like DC. there's still an answer to each other, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's the way of. Yeah, I don't even know which one was that, first, that, honestly. Like, it does it, yeah. Um, this might sound weird, but I always thought of League of Assassins as less of ninjas, even though they are like almost ninjas. League of League of Shadows. No, League of Assassins. Uh, it's only League of Shadows in Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Um, All right. The, only during that trilogy, and that was because they didn't want to use the word assassin. I think straight Why? up that was the reason. Why didn't they Ratings want to say assassin? or something. Okay, whatever. Because yeah, like, you can't say death. It's the same kind of deal. Right, well, they, were trying, okay. they were going for a PG-13 thing the entire time. Well, that's, oh, what, well. that's what I mean, though. Like, If they called it League of Assassins, then it would have been potentially messed with their ratings. I, I don't know. Their their ratings in terms of classification ratings. I I so that's what I heard anyway. Right. Um. It's just one of those things that's like dumb. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, that like League of Shadows is only in those movies. Like every other incarnation, it's always been League of Assassins. So. Right. Anyway. Um, okay. Fair enough. But Daredevil three looks really good, and he was kind of yeah. like. I don't. I'm really interested to see what they do. Yeah. And did did sure. Electra die at the end of season two? Actually, now that I think about it, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I actually. think she might have. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Now so you, maybe now she now comes back or something. Through. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Electra. <laughs> That's how she do. Also, she was a scroll for a while. Yeah. As uh-huh. everyone in the Marvel universe has been. As like more no, <laughs> well mo- more than half of the universe was during the Secret Invasion or whatever. Oh yeah, all right. I don't think they'll ever do the Secret Invasion because I don't. Th- it was too much of a mess. They don't want to. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. Um. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about is um, uh, what is the exact title of this? Uh, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Oh yeah. Ooh, Which man. It, like I watched the trailer of this because I I always liked um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Mm-hmm. Adventures of Sabrina. Oops. Yeah. Um. I always liked uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, even if it was kind of cheesy. And there's been like several incarnations of it. I think there's been at least two cartoons and and the like Melissa Joan Hart series that everyone thinks of. Um, yeah. Because like. There's just something so funny to me about like Salem, the wise cracking cat. I loved it. Yeah. That was like my favorite thing about that show. Uh, yeah. So this trailer, I, like, it definitely takes that concept and moves it into a darker tone and direction, <clears throat> which I, I love because I, I I I always kind of liked Sabrina the Teenage Witch, but she was kind of like bibbity boppity boo. I'm gonna turn you into a frog. 
but like having it like steeped in like legitimate like witchcraft and like they're like and even the, the, the image and... yeah cult horror even the image that they use is her with light casting a pentagram onto her so like it it, it looks like it's like the the darker tone shift in Sabrina the Teenage Witch could be really great and they keep showing Salem and I don't know if he talks but I want him to <clears throat> Well, he's, like, there has never been a Salem that has not been a person turned into a cat. So, like, he's got know. to, right? He has to. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, like, that's a mainstay. And then I think she's 16 in this. Yeah, it so says on her she's, 16th birthday. So she's yeah. still going to be a teenage witch, or not, based on how the series goes, I guess. But it just, it looks really... I don't know. There's been a lot of, like, witch shows, right? And I've watched uh-huh. a lot of them. Um, yeah. And a lot of them are like end up being kind of romance things. But this one actually looks like it's supposed to be more of a less of a drama and more of like a adventure slash horror kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm really into it. And like it looks like it even has like legit horror monsters too. Like there's a like like there's a uh, scene in the trailer where she's running through a hedge maze and like this zombie fucking pops out and pulls her into the corn like like it, it and among other things you know she's levitating people a bunch of druids chanting around a pentagram just all kinds of good so I feel stuff. like this is like the best possible way of rebooting a series like this yeah um taking a darker twist on it like seems really the way to go yeah for sure. Um, and it's coming out October 26th, so you don't have long to wait. Yeah, right before Halloween, which is good. Did we see I, the release date on she I didn't actually see that. I did not actually see that one. Here, I'll look it up real fast. she If we have one. September? No, wait. <laughs> September. Uh, I, I looked at the original one. <laughs> uh, November oh. 16th. Okay, so yeah, that's not too far off either. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. So these are that's cool. And we've been hearing about She-Ra for kind of a while. Yeah, yeah, I remember hearing about it. Yeah. Um, that's it for news, right? Yeah. 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 Uh Dawson, what games do you have coming out for streaming this week? Um, I'm probably gonna be playing Lore Let It Die. I was thinking, um, maybe oh, you know what? Actually, um, my work schedule is all messed up this week. I don't know if I'll be streaming this week. Uh, I'll save for Thursday. Um, yeah, it, pretty much every day I work through my stream time, so maybe I'm just going to take a week off this time or m- maybe stream during the night. Um, don't I don't really like to do that because I like to relax after work. But um, other than that, you can expect Let It Die and maybe a couple of like shitty freebie games that I get. Or, man, you know, maybe we'll find something good. <clears throat> How about you, Thel? What's coming up on our YouTube this week? Suspiria video this week, bitches. It's coming out this week? Hell yeah. Uh, Friday is the plan date, right? Okay, cool. Um, I already got, like, part of the way through it, so, uh, yeah, it'll it'll definitely be out by then. Okay, cool. Um, That's it for this week. We'll see you next time, and as always, remember... Uh, Stay beautiful. (laughs) Wow, there you go. Okay. Later.